52. The Jerry Ryan Show, Monday to Friday, 9 till 12 on 2FM. Fear. Oh, the absolute Ooh. fear. Terrible fear. Oh, there's so much fear when it happens to you, isn't there? It's a very scary Don't you become afraid. You become, very, you become terrible oh, nervous. Terrible nervous from it. <laughs> what are we talking about? God knows. Oh. We're now, talking about the the art. No, I'll tell you what. Read the intro. It's a lovely little tease. I'm going to. I'm going, yeah, but I'm going to just adjust your microphone. Oh, here we go. If you don't mind, I never mind. You're just in the fields <laughs> of Athenry. <laughs> Oh, you really want to adjust <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she was opening her top. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, you're too weak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. You're um, a fine girl. Do you know that? very much. Brought up well. Look at that. It's good, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Are you aware that it's the summer the out there? Huh? Are you aware that it's midsummer out there? Oh yeah, the weather was beautiful this morning. Yeah, except no, for G Ryan's now. car not starting, it's which beautiful. was a tiny bit of a downer. Because I was feeling just a little under the weather. But you could have taken the bus. Um, I did. I started walking. And you yeah. got on a bus, did you? No, I didn't get in on a bus. Arse. No, I don't in know how. To, I, 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 you don't know how no, to I, get no, on a bus. I, I decided Actually, that the I walk would be good for me. I did hear something that you were talking about. Was it last week? What was it? You? It was you, wasn't it? About disabled um, people getting on buses. No, and I don't was think a, that was, was me. Not you? There, there was somebody bringing a load of people. Oh, maybe it was Joe Duffy. You know, I say it was Ray Darcy. Oh, I think it was Joe Duffy, was actually. It the train to carry, or the train to carry. Or something like, yeah, and they ended up... They were coming up to the respite. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And there was speculation. Respite in Bushy Park, bizarrely. They said they were yeah, I didn't know about that, yeah. Who knew? Um, but uh, you speculated as to whether there might be such a thing as a wheelchair-enabled bus in Dublin. Is you there? You big eejit. Yeah, loads of them. No, I was talking about the kind of buses, buses that they have in Disney. Yeah, that, that lower. Yeah. I know, when you were talking about it as if it was... Do they have them. that? Yes, of course they have, and they've had them for donkey's years. Where? In I've never seen them. Dublin. Have you ever seen them? Well, you've never yet? been on a bus. What are I you talking about? I have been on a bus. Not since 1953. I mean, Jesus. That was a tram, I have by the way. I remember the trams. Of course you do. Yeah. I do <laughs> remember the trams. Of course, what genius. If anybody what knows genius? the name of the person who went... I'll tell you what I think we should do, councillors. We should get rid of them trams. Yeah. We'll never need them again. Yeah. They're completely impractical and going out of fashion as we speak. Do you know where they are now? Where? They're up in the Transport Museum. Not all of them, obviously, yeah. in um, in Hoth. Up the back of... Really? Yeah, which is well worth a visit, actually. I'll tell you what's also well worth a visit this weekend, if you've nothing else to... Mm. Um, and I haven't. The Railway Museum in that place on the way out to Donabate. It's that... What's it called? That house on the left-hand side as you're driving uh, out towards Donabate and Port Ram. Don't know. There's a railway, a model railway museum. Oh, the Fry Railway in yeah. Malahide Castle. Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah that's fantastic. really good. Yeah, really good. Actually, that is, Malahide Castle is a great place to go because there's a big playground for the kids as well. If indeed you've nothing better to do, which I have, as it turns out. What What have you got? What are you doing? I have to cook, a, I have to cook a very big spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> um, I have to go and have a few drinks with <laughs> my brother. Yeah. And my mother. Discuss family issues. Discuss family. Family issues. It's the collapse of the family. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and other things. Good. And will, and will you yeah. keep drinking all night, will you? I, I, well, I, I'm kind because of hoping to start Because it's the recession in the next and it's the only way to forget about it. Coast through it. Are you going to start in half an hour? I would if, if you'd like to. So will I rub it <laughs> later on? <laughs> you couldn't mention me play, could you? It's over, Fiona. Oh, yeah. Get uh, over it. It's so uh, over. Here we go. Are we ready? <laughs> We're ready. <laughs> last week. Know. That's all she said to me for the last couple of months. You couldn't mention the play, again, could you? <laughs> last week at the Cheltenham Festival, the BBC's racing expert, Claire Balding, unfortunate name, but however, bumped into style dictator Trini Woodall who said to her, I see you're dressed for radio. Did you hear about this? Were you mm, aware of this? Oh yeah, yes. yeah. Nice she aware. was, but that wasn't the point. When Balding repeated the insult on radio, one of her male colleagues commented that it was strange coming from somebody who looked as if she'd been taking part in the next race. Meow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Thank you. Poor El Trini. Um, yes, insults and bitchiness such as these uh, should never be applauded, but it's hard not to. In fact, it's very difficult not to enjoy this kind of thing. In fact, we love it. Fiona Looney's in studio, as you've probably already noticed, with some of the... This is very... This is the sin of pride. 
You've, you know that you have some of the wittiest put downs of all yeah, time. But I didn't write them. Right, they're okay. from famous people. Okay. Oh, sorry, they're from other famous no, people. <laughs> my my best one. Uh, you're famous. Yeah, yeah well. You no. are famous. You're a playwright and you're a broadcaster. You're my friend and you're famous. <laughs> In that order. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. My best one, which I'll, I'm going to make myself more articulate now than I was. When Are you I having trouble speaking today? A little bit. Are you having trouble with the old speaking I, as no, well? No, I had to perk up because so when I came in. I, I would so have an I had the special red eyes. I had the special well, I've red had eyes. an eye infection for a couple of weeks, oh. which is doing, it's wrecking me buzz completely. What, what, how did you get that? I don't know. I had it at the start of the run of my play, which is now over. Um, and then it cleared up and then I got it again towards the end. Drink, Will you do? Will you be bothered doing another play, would you? Not while there's a feckin' recession on, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, when I was having my first child mm. and it all went a bit peat tong, as they say, mm. and uh, the anaesthetist or whatever, the, one of, the, I don't know, somebody involved, a, a man. A the man in charge man. of the machine that goes ping. Yes, the man in charge of the machine <laughs> that, goes, that goes ping said, uh, you, you, we're going to have to do an emergency cesarean section. Is there any other kind? Actually, said you. it might be my second child. But anyway, mm. one of them, I was in bits and I, I just had done enough. I was, it was the second one. I was wrecked. And I'd laboured long and hard. You were in really, labour yeah. for as long as Rory Quinn. I was. Yeah. Although with less success. <laughs> Although, well. Mm. Um, ah. And uh, anyway, they said, I'm afraid, you know, we're going to have to do an emergency cesarean section now. And I said, OK, OK. I said, but knock me out. I don't want to be conscious. I can't be Bring conscious. Bring in the machine anymore. that goes ping. Bring in the machine that goes ping. I can't be conscious. And to which the, the, the lovely, well-scrubbed surgeon man turned around mm. to me and said, I have to tell you, if you were my wife, I would want you to be conscious. And I said, if I was your wife, I would definitely want to be unconscious. What did you mean by that? <laughs> that it's safer to be conscious when you're oh, having a yeah. cesarean than general anaesthetic. I didn't anesthetic. know that. Well, local anaesthetics are always safer than general yeah. anaesthetics. Yeah, but you have to see all the sort of, you have to see the... You see your insides. You don't, because they put do you a not, screen up. And did you not, did, what about your husband? Was he not asked, did he want to have a look at the he business didn't, end? Um, well, no, oh. no, because the, the business end is, would you like to see your wife being disemboweled, basically? Yeah. Well, no, not particularly. I'll stay up this end. <laughs> And then they lifted the baby out and they said, look, we found something else in here. It's Shergar. Wow. <laughs> I said, look, How it's a baby, there? but it's I also knew, a miniature race I knew I was drunk that <laughs> night, but I had no idea Shergar had entered the room. But that explains a great deal. And that's why you had to have an emergency <laughs> cesarean. But <laughs> always, that's what we always do. Speaking of Cheltenham the lady and all this. finds a racehorse inside her. Last week when I was in here, you were asking me, mm. was I that interested in Cheltenham? And I think I said that I, I didn't gamble. No. Oh, I so went out of here. Did you? This day last and week. And gambled. Gambled for the whole day. I spent the whole day online gambling. My goodness. Bet on about seven races. Won 300 euros. You're joking. I'm not joking. But I, I got You're the impression just, that you didn't know anything about gambling. I don't gambling. know anything about, well, I do now. I know it's really Because you know, really our easy. man upstairs, the yeah, Jerry Rancho allotment um, yeah, expert manager. and uh, and researcher and other man on the Ryan show, mm. um, John Riley. John Riley Token went man. from, literally went from whatever is pre-kindergarten, from fetus yeah. level of knowledge about horse racing to beating Paddy Power and Hector. Yeah, yeah. well, no, I, I had a fantastic day. 300 euros, I swear mm. to God. And then when I got up on the Saturday morning, I was doing the hoovering. I was still a bit I was the hoovering. And um, I was doing the hoovering and I was thinking, is there racing on a Saturday morning? Like from Goran Park or something yeah. that I can... Well, you and, know the and names one of my kids and came now. in to me and said, I found a new racing channel for you. Um, what, like at number 550 million on the uh, thing. the digital thing. And uh, so I put it on for a minute. But I didn't. I resisted the urge to bet. Do, because you know you can do it online with, and everything. Oh, well, I was doing yeah. it online. I, yeah. I was sitting in there in my tracksuit. I wasn't even dressed. And you won how much? 300 euros. But how much did you spend? 20 euros. That's very good. Yeah. And who are you betting with? Paddypower.com. Yeah. He you likes think? you, though. Do you think he... Do you think you they went, Mr. Bet. Power, Fiona Looney's online betting. Give us some free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he may do now <laughs> if he knows what side his bread is butter. Now, let's have a look at these um, witty put right, downs. right. Uh, this is all very Monty Python stuff. Prince to Michael Jackson. Do you know what? I've heard this many... I heard this as a joke. Mm. I never knew it was Prince who supposedly had said it. Yeah. Um, originally, when Michael Jackson released the album Bad, that the reason he called it Bad was because the word pathetic wouldn't fit on the cover. Ooh. Ooh. I had heard that as a joke, but apparently 
It starts with Prince. What are your feelings about Michael Jackson selling out the 10 gigs in the O2 in London? He kind of passed me by. He's coming over here as oh, well, isn't he? Oh, yes, what yes. Date I is was that? talking to our friend Mr. H and he was saying, what do you think about putting him on in the O2? I said, well, it'll sell out. Do you mean in the point? Yeah, he's selling out everywhere. Stop doing that. Um, that breaks the contract when you call it that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he, I, Happily, th- I don't <laughs> have a contract. <laughs> AG, who I think are the people, or maybe it's Live Nation, I don't know, but they now think that he could do 50 gigs. Ow! That was a very good Michael there. Jackson there. I did there. Oh! <laughs> no, that but was unfortunately, book. apparently two um, wags on the BBC um, likened him to the return of the IRA, which yeah. was quite cruel, I think. <laughs> Because we can't yeah. condone or endorse that sort of language on this program. I think, my, I think my husband is on tour himself while Michael Jackson is over. Is he? Someone was talking to me about this last night, asked me if I wanted to so go. You're being left alone with the children. Left alone Holy for Jesus. weeks on end while my he goes goodness. off, horsing his stupid band around the north of England. And uh, um, who are? Is the death school? Are they yeah. back together again? Yeah, they get back. Well, together I want to see years. that. They're very good. But what a way to, go, to end it all! To I always sing the same them. song, don't I? Yeah. April showers. <laughs> I'm able to do it, you see. Um, is anybody uh, dead in the band? Do they need somebody to Nearly. Dep? Somebody died and somebody's nearly dead. Actually, no, that's terrible. Um, no, they're fine. They're all very they're grand. healthy. Um, and you know it is the comeback time. I mean, oh, little, he's not yeah. on one of those things with Kajigugu and a whole load of other people. Oh, no, it? no. They they're, they do it on their own. Oh, sorry. sorry they're grown up. Back. <laughs> but, but um, yeah, so I can't go to Michael Jackson. All right, that was I good. My Prince. Now, actually. Prince. Billy Wilder. Billy um, Wilder on having... Film it. director yeah. described somebody as having Van Gogh's ear for music. Do you like that? Yeah, that's you good. Like that? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bit uh, of an extension of a very famous Les Dawson joke um, about how he'd, uh, he'd, he'd, been, he'd been rooting around in the attic and he found a Van Gogh and a Stradivarius. Unfortunately... <laughs> Van Gogh wasn't very good at making violins and Stradivarius was a dreadful painter. <laughs> boom, boom. Boom, boom. Did I say Les Dawson? I meant Tommy Cooper. Tommy Cooper. Winston Poor Churchill. Tommy Cooper. God help yeah. him. Died he died on stage. On stage. Yeah. It was terrible. Everybody clapped and laughed. It. Oh, it's I've on seen YouTube it. now, is it? No, it's on YouTube and it's uh, it's very, very sad because... I bet it isn't on YouTube. It is. I think it's on YouTube, I'm gonna yeah. run home. I'm going to run because home. Because Tommy Cooper, it. for those of you who don't know anything about Tommy Cooper, he was a, uh, a kind of a hapless comedian uh, who was, was genuinely brilliant. very, very, very funny. funny. Um, very uh, good for uh, if you were a bit hungover. And he always sounds as if he has a few drinks. He did always have uh, a few <laughs> drinks. I think that's a matter so, of record. So he, for some bizarre reason, he wore a fez. Because he was a magician. Added, yeah, yeah, added to the uh, the thing. So he was, I mean, his, his tricks were crap, but he was hilarious. Yeah. Right, and he 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 died on stage. I think wasn't it at the I London was Palladium? A, yeah, I think and it was like a variety performance. Fell over onto the stage. Everybody went, "Ah, <laughs> look what he's doing now!" I got a big round of applause. Well, unfortunately, he was actually dead. And I think I don't know whether this is true because I never saw it, but I think they built they brought the safety curtain down, mm. and unfortunately, his feet were kind of sticking, sticking out. Yeah, which was even funnier. So he <laughs> died as he lived. Oh yeah, he wouldn't want being to be Bottle glass, yeah. glass bottle. Well done. Right yeah. Done. Winston Churchill on Lady Astor. This is a very well known. I know this idea, one. And it's great. Um, he, Lady Astor, who was witty enough in mm. um, in her own right, said, "Winston, if you were my husband, I'd poison your coffee." To which Winston Churchill replied, "Madam, if I were your husband, I would drink it." That's up there with me and the unconscious thing. Mm. See, I could have been mm. Lady mm. Astor. I could have been a knob. Winston Churchill had many brilliant put downs. Um, to the massively fat Labour MP Bessie Braddock she said sir you are drunk and he said madam you are ugly but in the morning I shall be sober <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of my favourite one yeah it's good yeah, isn't cruel, it cruel but you know <laughs> from an observational point of view some would say another fair another Winston Churchill one I never heard this before to George, George Bernard Shaw apparently there was an animosity between the two I wonder why. Don't know. George Bernard Shaw sent him two tickets to the opening night of, of a play and put a note of it saying, um, I'm enclosing two tickets to the first night of my new play. Bring a friend if you have one. And Churchill sent a note back saying, cannot possibly attend the first night. We'll attend second if there is one. Whoa. Hey. Shaw had a reputation for being very rude. I saw. Did you ever see that interview with Shaw? Where you can hear the plane. It's it's one of the first things ever done on television. And you can hear a plane, like a biplane going over in the background. And you just realise that Shaw, well, he wasn't contemporary. Like, you know, he seems ancient. Do you know what I mean? In, in like, you kind of think... But well, if there was a biplane going over me, is ancient, all right, no, or but was. It's, it's brilliant. It's probably on YouTube. Yeah, it's probably on YouTube. Everything's on YouTube.
everything. I'm not on YouTube. Are you not? YouTube? I think you are. I think you'll find. Uh, there's a lot of stuff about me on YouTube. Yeah. No, on the internet. Not always complimentary. Is there stuff? Is, I'll have to look you up on yeah. YouTube. Yeah. <sighs> You are on YouTube. I'm I not. Think. I don't think so. No. no. Not that I'm aware. Do you want to make a video and put it on it? Yeah. Why not? Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking desperately for another one. Yeah. Randolph Churchill, uh, who was his unpleasant son, Winston's unpleasant son, by all accounts. Um, Evelyn Waugh, very funny man, who I thought was a very funny lady for many years, um, writing in his diary in 1964 after Randolph Churchill had had a benign tumor re- removed. Evelyn Waugh wrote, a typical triumph of of modern science to find the only part of Randolph that was not malignant and remove it. (laughs) 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 I wish I'd made that up. I tell you, poor old Evelyn Waugh wasn't a particularly nice chap either. He was immensely rude. Talented. Brideshead being, I think, one of the great small novels. Yeah. But immensely rude. Yeah, he was meant to be. Yeah, he really didn't suffer fools. Like, in any capacity. I know, very, very rude. I met his son. Did you? Once Obron or Braun, as he was known in the Garrick. Um, what was he like? He was, he was quite rude. Yeah. Probably not as spectacularly rude, but he was kind of like one of these. He was a bit like a Hugh Leonard kind of character, you know, that he, he was curmudgeonly, but he was very funny. Have you arrived at that point now in your life yet where you won't actually do the. Where if somebody is rude to you, oh yes, you're on the Jerry Ryan show, he's shit, isn't he? Do you just go, shut up, would you? I, just, I, I never, I've never suffered fools. Even no. as a very young person, I. No, I cannot. Oh, God. Life is way too short. Oh, much too I short. I met somebody recently, and actually, I believe he's a lovely young fella, but uh, he he got off on the wrong foot with me because he started giving me a heart. Like, he was kind of doing a lot of that, you know, pointing and another Fingering. thing. So you think you're great. You think you're great. But I've been to Africa, and I've seen in Uganda that there are children there, brothers, and they're killing each other and eating each other just to stay alive. And oh. I just thought... That's not really happening. And I laughed. And he just became incredibly offended. So I just walked away. Why was he telling you that? Because that's because that's what people like you and me attract. There's people who come over and say... (laughs) Finger-pointing cannibal haters. You're great. (laughs) Finger-pointing cannibal haters. There are just a lot of people. That's the audience that we've been given now. There's just hundreds, if not thousands of people Mm. out there whose sole purpose in life is to bring us down a a rung or two. And they're all listening today. to put us straight (laughs) on where we're going wrong. And do you know something? Thanks, folks. (laughs) A lot of whom are on strike today, of course, being a taxi protest. Oh, mind you, guys, (laughs) after my half walk into work today, I hailed a taxi because I was afraid I wouldn't be in in time to... You know, fulfill That's my true. contractual obligations. Mm. And um, a taxi You should have dr- missed the first 10% of the show. Uh, thank that would you have very been fine. G- uh, Yes, <laughs> now you've put thoughts into my mind. Um, but a, t- a taxi, Jerry, how's it going, Jerry? Good man. I suppose it's down to the queer place. <laughs> and I said, yeah, absolutely. And he was well pissed off with the strike now, I can tell you. Because mm. he said, you know, I'm not going to get in now to the strike. Um, I'm going to lose business. And this was a union guy, you know. He wasn't against the idea of trade unions or industrial action. But he wasn't a happy guy today. I said, what are you going to do? He says, I'm going to just go stay at home. Mm. I said, would you not drive the tra- taxi? Break the strike. He said, no, no. It hasn't got that bad. He says, wouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Yeah. They're going I to do a picket on the airport I, today I as well. Or is there, I don't really care. Anyway. Uh, you would if you were going to the airport, you'd care. Yeah, but I'm not going to the airport. So okay, so you don't care. Um, here's one of my very favourites. But you know what? I did not know who said this. And I was quite surprised to learn that it's actually attributed to Margot Asquith, who was the wife of the Liberal Prime Minister, Mr. Asquith. Lord Asquith. Lord Asquith, yeah. Um, and she was introduced to Jean Harlow. Do you know this one? This great. No, I this don't. Is but I know who Jean all Harlow time, is. Yeah. This is the all-time greatest put down. Yeah. She was introduced to Jean Harlow, and they said, "This is um, Lady Asquith." Uh, Mar- yeah, or she read her name. It was like they were sitting on the same table, and it was like a name thing on a what do you call those? You know what I mean? Uh, 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 sir, sir, yeah. Thing. No, the, the seat, the oh. name, seating plan, name tag, type thing. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> and anyway, Jean Harlow was the two and she read Margot Asquith and she turned around and she said, hello, you must be Margot. And uh, Margot said, um, no, actually, I'm Margot. The T is silent, as in Harlow. <laughs> hey! That's good. 
Well, wonders because uh, Harlow Actually, was, uh, was a feisty young one. She she would have. Uh, yeah, yeah. She was a little bit on the common side. Is that fair really? to say? Um, well, I didn't. I never side. met her. Dead obviously. of course. So I can say what I want okay. about her. She yeah. was common, common as muck. Um, actually, there's a great put down, which is quite rude. Mm-hmm. Mm, might need to test it on you. Yeah. Do we have an ad break? Do you need yeah. an ad break? Yeah. I could test it okay. on you. I could, tr- I could road, you, road rude test put it. down road testing you. in road progress. Road test it in the uh, oh. Yeah. Now I have to come back on the air now. Oh, yes, no. Uh, well, so a green, a green light for the first one, but not for the second not one, Not for reckon, the second yeah. one, first one, Okay, yeah. so the first one is Joan Collins. It's a worrying day, I have to tell you, when Fiona <laughs> asks permission <laughs> about what she's going to say. Joan Collins um, once said, when Monica Lewinsky entered a room, Joan Collins, who's an extremely funny woman, for people who don't know that, mm. um, and Joan Collins turned to her companion and said, there but for a vowel goes the Count of Monte Cristo. Yay! He said it was okay, Schnitt. He right. said that was okay. No, but it's good. It's clever. <laughs> it is clever. It's, clever. it's like it? something Oscar Wilde well, would is. say. Speaking of Oscar Wilde, he has no enemies, but is intensely disliked by his friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Only for the fact that I'm, uh, we're coming towards the end of the item, yeah. we should have got Michael Cott, Michael Colgan. Michael Colgan. On, on the phone. Yeah. Because he's very good at these kind of things. He's... he's some vicious put downs. I've Michael Colgan, who I believe years. attended the X Factor show in the O2 last night. Did he? In the point. Yeah, looking for new ideas. What's he doing there? By mistake. Uh, he was with the. He was on my play the other night. I thought it was great. Did he? Yeah. yeah. Well, he should know. Yeah, indeed. Um, we refer to Colgan as a genius. Do we? Yeah. You and me both. Yeah. Well, I do now that he liked my play. <laughs> yeah. A week ago, I wouldn't have called him anything of the sort. Um, it's funny what this a week been cleaned up. a week in show business. A week in show business. How shallow are we? Um, I, I remember this one, hearing this one at the time. This is great, though it has been cleaned up. So you'll have to, you, you can imagine what the okay. original one was. This is actually a Zimbabwean cricketer whose name was Eddie Brandes, who's quite overweight, but he's a really good um, cricketer, whatever position he plays. And an Australian bowler was giving him a hard time at the crease and c- kept going on about like, you know, look at you. How come you, you know, you shouldn't even be out here? How did you get to be so fat or why are you so fat? And to which Eddie Brandes replied, because every time I sleep with your wife, she gives me a biscuit. He didn't say sleep with. <laughs> And there was one we used to and use. The fact years that ago. that's definitely yeah. not true. I know. Doesn't it's, affect it's great. Anything that it's involves people's in mothers, in the slightest. you know, just is kind of so random and, and wrong. Yeah, but it's we, very schoolyard, very isn't it? Very schoolyard. I used to. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You think my dad's stupid? You know what your father is? Your f- father's double stupid. Yeah, yeah. With, with knobs on. Yeah, that <laughs> kind of thing is always good. Your mother used to swim out to meet the fleet. <laughs> I <was> enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be delighted if somebody said that to one of my kids about me. I just think it was really smart. Your mother used to swim out to meet the fleet. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day to all mothers listening. Indeed. Um, Anything special planned for you? I, I'm, I'm not sure. This is. Yeah. Are we finished or do you want a couple more of these? You look no, like you've lost more, interest. Yeah. Yeah. Groucho Marx, I've had a perfectly wonderful evening, but this wasn't there? it. Oh, sorry, I'm scratching myself. Sorry. It's unladylike. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um... I see you shaved this week anyway. Good. Well done. Oh, I kind of probably need to get, get back in there at the coal face, so to speak. Um, but I wasn't expecting the hot spell, was I? Who no. knew? I yeah. should see my legs. Oh, no, you shouldn't, actually. And, you know, you get this weather and you're going, should I take the plastic off the table outside? Should I put the sun lounger Not out? Yet. But no, because you just know. Which reminds tomorrow. me, I actually have to. I did sit out, I have to. Uh, I have to paint my garden furniture now and I better do it. I might do it this weekend. Well, you should have done it before the winter. Uh, yeah, that's a very good point, mm. Fiona. Yeah. Mm. To, to weatherproof it, yeah. like. Yeah, we yeah. probably need to do ours again. We just well, I was plastic. somewhat transient. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing that I've made it <laughs> through the winter, the garden furniture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm very giddy now. Um, here's one from Noel Gallagher. Oh, no, it's from Robbie Williams to Noel Gallagher. Mm-hmm. I have to say, Noel no Gallagher, love lost there. No love lost there. Noel Gallagher has delivered some of the best put downs, but none of them are here, and I couldn't have been arsed going to the internet to find them. Um, this is your last one, so make it good. Oh, it's not that good. Um, it's a card that uh, Robbie Williams sent to Noel Gallagher, which was an RIP, a rest in peace card, and just said, Heard your last album with deepest sympathy, Robbie Williams. 
Compared to your last f- album yeah. with Deepest Sympathy, yeah. Robbie Williams. Yeah, which is kind of up there with the Prince, Michael Jackson. I'm yeah. sorry I've gone out such a flat note No, now. that is a flat note, yeah. And also, tragically, because Robbie Williams, it would be all right if the you know if Robbie Williams was now currently on tour and the mm. current album was... But well, Robbie Williams has just disappeared up his own you-know-what. Uh, I think he'll be back. Do you? Do not write off the fat dancer from Take That, as Noel Gallagher once called him. And on that note, we say to Fiona Looney, Happy Mother's Day in anticipation of a lovely Sunday, isn't it, I think? Sunday, yeah. Of course, my mother's dead, so I won't be having a happy Mother's Day. However, we'll just Sorry keep Sorry for going. laughing. <laughs> my father's dead, but it's not Father's Day. Well, they're in heaven <laughs> celebrating our success. <laughs> Unlike everyone else. <laughs> yes, that's true. To <laughs> FM. Afternoons on 2FM, kicking off at midday with Mickey Hayes and her all-request all lunch. Request lunch. That's 120 minutes of your music. You choose, we obey, and play. Be <laughs> in with a chance of winning the biggest prizes on radio. radio. Then at 2 p.m., Rick O'Shea perks up your day with a box full of afternoon delights. <laughs> Interviews from the biggest stars and bizarre topics to keep your brain in motion. Afternoons on 2FM. You work, we play. Two concerts sell out in jig time. Absolutely not one single ticket left. The album is number one in 31 countries. Evidence that you two are finished. It's all over. <laughs> it's all over. Might as well give up now. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, you're, um, you're just confirming rumours that we've heard in the last 10 minutes. And it's overwhelming, really. And um, very, very... I don't know, you know, it's really, it's a very big deal for us um, to sell out our, our hometown and in such, at such speed. It's unbelievable. Every band fears their hometown. Profits and hometowns are always an uneasy relationship. And when it comes to concerts the size of uh, the 360 degree, um, you know, you obviously were worried. You were nervous. It must be a great relief. Yeah, as Gavin Friday says, Insecurity is your best security. Or that's just who we are. You know, we never, we don't take anything for granted. The album getting to number one in um, in 31 countries uh, was a. We had a big celebration. Then we found out it wasn't number one in Finland, and we were depressed. That's the kind of band we are. Yes, yeah, number two in Finland. What <laughs> beach in Finland? I don't know. <laughs> But uh, no, this is this is a very very big deal, and these are they're not even musical events. Uh, playing uh, in Dublin, it's a, it's a tribal event. Mm. It's a sociological experiment, uh, and it's like a big wedding. I don't know what's going. On. It's it, it, it's we've had such incredible memories, and then even going out to Slane, um, back on the uh, Elevation tour, that was just, they were stunning shows, and Croke Park. It's it's very very very. Uh, special to us and, and we're very much looking forward to it and we have a very extraordinary stage set up yeah I want to, uh, I want to you ask you about, about that. that I've okay. seen the model can you describe it for the listeners because it's it's brand new well it's hard to describe you know normally you can't go 360 um, outdoors I mean you could when you were the Beatles because you just have very little sound gear mm. so you just put it out in the field and no one could hear the Beatles above the, sc- the screaming but um, indoors, you can do it because you can hang stuff out of the roof, but there is no, um, you can't hang stuff out of the sky. But we found uh, this extraordinary piece of engineering, and um, I think it will, it's going to create a very different feeling at the show. Now, we're not in the middle. I'd like to clear that up. It's at one end. So the people behind us, it'll be like, it'll be like having 10,000 people on stage. Now, I watched one or two attempts at 360 in the past, and it, it was certainly a, a challenge for the performers because they had to leg it around the stage quite a bit. It added, in fact, another two-thirds, I suppose, to the effort involved. Um, and you're going to have to really choreograph the whole thing, aren't you? Not really. I mean, it's in Madison Square Gardens, right? It's just ima- imagine... That's, you know, when you're playing indoors in arenas in the United States, that's the feeling. And that's really it. Um, no, we were, it's not going to be too choreographed. I mean, it's a rock and roll show. Um, but um, I, we've, we've created a, a, a stage setup which allows us to really get quite close 
um, um, to a lot of people. And I'm going to have to be very fit. I'm boxing, I'm running, I'm doing my press-ups, I'm chasing Larry Mullen down the road. It's a, uh, yeah, we're going to have to be very fit. And you haven't really, I mean, this man hasn't been drinking or eating now for, for months and months. He's back to his boy he- boyhood boxing weight of about 14 years of age. I've got a glass of champagne in front of me, Jerry, uh, <laughs> and it's Lent. <laughs> Uh, no, we're, we're, we're very, uh, we're, we're able for this, and um, the, the new songs are working out so well. We played a little show in Boston mm-hmm. to about, I don't know, 800 people or something, and it was, it was a crazy situation. There was thousands of people outside. They closed down the, the city. It was a big, small deal, and the real... Uh, effort for us was, was, you know, the real uh, jeopardy for us was how these songs were going to play live. We'd done one radio show in um, uh, in the UK, but we'd never played a pr- proper gig. And they really, they they're going, they stand up. A um, song like Breathe just really has just taken on a life of its own. Get On Your Boots is, uh, is now a rock and roll uh, uh, tune again, which is how it started when Edge demoed it. Uh, it got nicely spongy on the album and kind of funky but now it's like a, a rock and roll tune it's great um uh, magnificent is a, is, uh, is is shining so i think we've got them we've got the songs they're complicated songs so and i remember back um during octung baby wild horses for instance was such a complicated song that it proposed uh, you know it 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 posed lots of technical difficulties and sometimes I think you felt maybe it's a beautiful song but it's actually not really possible to perform it on stage some of these songs are equally as complex have you conquered that one for the live performance well I just heard you playing moment of surrender and that you know people are saying it's our finest moment ever and that's the one I want to see we haven't um we haven't got around um to playing that um yet because I don't we have we I don't know but I might have a hunch that's going to be great live. Um, some of them are complicated, but, you know, I... I um, but as I say, um, so far, they're, they're remarkably um, um, e- e- easy to get inside of. I think a lot of people, you know, would be fascinated to you talk a little bit about um, how risky the making of the album was and the birth of this album was difficult. It took a long time um, you know, it's it's not that difficult third album. It's way, way beyond that. And to to make it different, to make it something in its entirety that you want to listen to track after track in the traditional sense, and to make it lo- and to make it something that was significant and something that would make people sit up, I think was hugely challenging for you. It worked, I believe, a hundred and ten percent. But I think it was scary. Uh, well, I mean. We- it started out really uh, effortlessly here in Fez, where I'm now talking to you from. Um, we had this little uh, hotel, a Riyadh, with a courtyard in the middle of We set up the gear and birds flying in and, and the call of prayer and uh, outside. It was a beautiful environment to make music. And it, it really, it, it took off like a rocket and it ended um, on, a, on a real high. But there was a sort of, there was a middle period where where things got a little um, self conscious and we lost our way a bit. And it's funny, you know, uh, the band were saying, and, and Larry in particular was saying, you know, he kept saying, you know, we don't have to put out an album. <laughs> let's, just, let's just make music <laughs> for the sake of it. Um, we ran with that uh, for a while, but as soon as we thought we have to put it out, that's when I think the self consciousness came in. We, we we have like forty tunes, and we, we, I mean it's not like we were uh, sitting around um, uh, biting our nails. We just we just got lost in the music, got a lot of songs, and then had to pare it down to the best songs, but also to try and make it work together as a whole because we're in a time now when when people don't buy albums, they just buy tunes. You know, they download them off iTunes or whatever, and they make up. Uh, playlists. People don't listen to albums, so we really wanted it to work, beginning, middle, and end. And I think we, I think we got there. Um, and we also we, we had two desires. We wanted to be, 
completely ourselves and and, uh, and and get to the essence of what U2 has to offer and be completely experimental and try things that were very different. And that and yeah, I think you can hear both those thoughts on the album. Moment of Surrender that you've just played is like nothing we've ever done before. And it, it, we played it only once and this voice came out of me. I just don't know where it came from. I don't even know where the lyrics came from it was one of those kinds of songs and it's a completely different feeling but something like magnificent i think has the essence of of uh of what edge does um captured in a sort of crystalline form now if you know if you accept that it is an album it's not something even though on itunes you can download whatever tracks you wish and leave the others aside i it's it's an old-fashioned album in the sense that you are meant to listen to a track after track the sequence of the tracks says something to the listener very powerful messages there if you listen to it in its entirety now you have to put it into a full concert and like any other big rock and roll band there's a hunger and a thirst for um, a greatest hits moment every few minutes from the audience, which is perfectly legitimate. How do you, how do you mix and weave it in? Well, we haven't figured out uh, the set list yet. But uh, again, the thing we look for in, in U2 shows is rather than it being a kind of jukebox of songs, we, we try to get the whole um, to be greater than the sum of the parts. We want the, ho- the feeling when you leave the concert, we want you to, there's a sort of, you know, we want you to feel you've been through something. So it's not just a collection of songs. We tried that on a couple of occasions, just playing songs, make, you know, making up the set list as we went along. We weren't, it just, it, we didn't have that. Um, but as regards the album, and, and people are allowed to dip in and out of it. In fact, I was just coming across the bridge there uh, at the point, and I, uh, there was a, somebody in the car next to me was listening to the album, and I hadn't heard it on a car stereo before, and I, couldn't help but rolling down my window. I was trying to listen. And uh, he was listening to White as Snow. And I went, wow, this is great. And, I was, uh, and then he, halfway through, he changed to stand-up comedy and he turned it up. So I was just, uh, I think that's okay. Yeah. That's allowed. So the, the shuffle, shuffle button, button on the iPod is not your enemy. No, no. Fine, people can make up their own set list. By, by the way, in the, there's, a, there's a sort of deluxe package which has a, uh, a little, it's not a movie exactly that Anton Corbin did. It's more like moving images for a screensaver while you're listening to the album. And he did it in a different order. So if you want to hear Anton Corbin's um, order with moving pictures, um, that's, that's one to check out. Now, the um, show director, William Williams, uh, who's worked with John Zoo, Pop Mart, Elevation and Vertigo, if I'm not mistaken, um, he is uh, directly involved with the design. Um, I think you really like working with people who you've been with for a long time. Believe it or not, he's been with us since the war tour. Wow. Willie Williams. Is, um, I mean, that's the amazing thing about this crew. You know, they... They're people, Joe O'Hurley, he, these are men we've been with all our life. Sam O'Sullivan, his 50th birthday there uh, the other week. These are, it's, it's, it's a strange thing. And, you know, we always, you know, people use football analogies. And uh, sometimes, you know, and they say, oh, yeah, you know, you're Celtic or you're Man U or whatever it is. But if you imagine this is, Manchester United, but it's still George Best, <laughs> and it's still a Dennis Law. It's a bit, you know, these are people who, you know, it, 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 it is, I mean, maybe that I shouldn't be saying that, maybe that conjures really the wrong picture, but, uh, but the people, these are, it's the same team, and Willie Williams, you, you know, he's a, he's a genius at this stuff, and, and our live shows, People, you know, we were the first to use the B stages, the first to use video, the first to use um, this in-ear technology, which allowed you to go out into the middle of the crowd. Um, um, and this is there's a bit of a risk on this one. I mean, we, we, we've never played outdoors in 360. It, it, it is it is it is controversial, but uh, I think 
it's going gonna, it's gonna to make that kind of Madison Square Garden feeling. That's what we're looking for. Finally, um, you know, you're older men now. Um, uh, Steady on. Wiser, wiser older, and fitter. Um, um, but, but, and you've you families. families. Uh, you've got wives and girlfriends um, and, and leaving them behind gets difficult and more difficult, I think, um, as the years go by. How do, you, how do you legislate for that emotionally? Well, they, they want to be very good reasons to leave home. Um, uh, uh, there want to be 11 great reasons. They're the songs um, on the album. The other thing,